This video will cover the topic, values of inverse trigonometric functions. I know we normally notate inverse functions with a negative one superscript. Do we do that with trig functions too? Yes. Some examples of inverse trigonometric functions are inverse sine of x, inverse cosine of x, and inverse tangent of x. We can also write these as arc sine of x, arc cosine of x, and arc tangent of x. Okay, so what do these functions actually mean? When asked to find the inverse trig function of a certain value, we must determine the angle for which the original trig function would equal the given value. For example, y equals the inverse sine of x means that sine of y equals x, and y is in the set negative pi halves to pi halves. Let's take a look at an example problem. Say we want to find the exact value of the inverse sine of square root 3 over 2 in radians. This means we will need to find the angle y in the range negative pi halves to pi halves, such that sine of y equals the square root of 3 over 2. Using our understanding of special angles, we know that sine of pi thirds equals square root 3 over 2, so our answer is pi thirds. Why don't we try one more example? Let's say we want to find the inverse tangent of negative square root 3 over 3 in radians. This means we need to find the angle y within the range negative pi halves to pi halves such that tangent y equals negative square root 3 over 3. Okay, well I know that tangent of negative pi over 6 equals the negative square root of 3 over 3. So our answer would be negative pi over 6, right? Yes, good job. I think I'm starting to understand this topic. When evaluating an inverse trig function, we need to find the angle for which the original trigonometric function would equal the given input value. That's exactly right. Great work.